and I am back again to get started on this again. At least to resume this where I left off. We're carrying out our captain's orders. What, what do you want? We made a mistake last time, and we're working hard to rectify it now. We don't have time for anything, so that's it. They were the pair who were after Firefly at the time. <laughs> Do you... Well, spit it out. So you know each other. Uh, why do you keep... <sighs> That's right. We're investigating a murder for the family. May we access the hotel's dream pool entry records? Oh. Uh, well... Hey! The security officer instructed everyone to shut their trap! Before he returned from Dream's Edge. What murder? You'd better stop. Yeah, that, that, that's right. Looks like they're not going to co-op. Uh, why don't we just look for the security officer? Apologies. The Bloodhound family can bond a minute. How much trouble have you seen? Not possible. It was you. Uh, uh. Uh, I'm not letting you get. Huh? Hold on, sir. We have documents authorized by the family that would aid your investigation. If it wouldn't trouble you. Who exactly is this Gallagher you keep talking about? There have been a few people mentioning. Uh, he didn't. It was the security. Uh, he'll do. <sighs> sorry. No can do. The boss. Everyone, please leave. We're really sorry for troubling. Another way. Can you perform it again? Sorry. Everyone, please. <sighs> Let me. Whoa. It's this time of time to clock out. And no one. Uh, what? Huh? <laughs> uh, <sighs> At least he won't be getting in our way again. I was wondering what all the commotion was. Hello, Mr. Gallagher, sir. <laughs> Miss Himako, you're too polite. There's no need to call me sir. Mr. Gallagher? Of course I do. You folks are from the legendary Astro... I had an encounter with this lady in the Golden Hour. I remember that little silver-haired girl was there, too. Right, I'm forgetting I'm also streaming this. I'm sorry for what happened to that kid. This is also the reason why we've come to visit you, Mr. Gallagher. The Express can't just overlook the death of that child. So we've decided to help the family get to the bottom of it, in the hopes of getting justice for her. The Nameless, involved with the family. What an unpredictable twist of fate. Uh. Why? What's wrong with the family? I'm shivering. It's nothing. On Penicone, everyone loves the family. No matter how much one resists the beautiful dream, when the time comes, they too will find it hard to let go. Who wants to leave a warm nest? Just idiots, little kids, and inebriated fools. Mm. Mr. Gallagher seems to be getting at something. But you got it wrong. I'm not. You want to discuss the case? Sure, come with me. This is not a good place to talk. Let's go elsewhere. On the other side with Welt again. Even after that chilling tragedy, this dream is still running effortlessly. Yep. 
other than the family of the Harmony, it's hard to imagine any other power in the universe that could sustain a building of such magnitude. The family itself is a huge, perfect building. Like a living idol. Mm. Each member of the family sees themselves as a piece of the divine puzzle, revolving around a singular core and a shared ideal. Under their command, they loyally fulfill their roles, offering themselves while also receiving sustenance in return. An interesting analogy. Perhaps that's why Pinacone's beautiful dream has persisted for so long. But the human body has its limits, and so does the divines. That doesn't sound like the kind of comment a galaxy ranger would make. Just pointing out the facts. Mr. Yang will definitely have a better sense of what's going on than I do. Why do you say that, Miss Acheron? The beautiful dream is crumbling. But not because of a particular eon, a particular faction, or a particular visitor. Its collapse stems from a certain inevitability of human nature. The family refuses to acknowledge this, and it has ultimately backfired and become a catalyst. As people immerse their souls in the dreamscape, where consequences and pain cease to exist, and only ease and pleasure prevail, they draw closer and closer to necrosis. Regardless of the perceived bliss, death looms as the inevitable conclusion. Also, this necrosis will diffuse and spread. One piece of the puzzle's mutation will eventually cause the entire building to shake, break, and crumble. In the end, the dreams that people built in the name of freedom became the cage that imprisoned them. Uh. I'm sure you've gained a lot from this trip, Miss Acheron. Are you willing to share your findings with me? Of course. That's if I remember. Just a habit. Owing to events in the past, I've become easily forgetful. It's only when this sword is unsheathed that those hazy memories start to become clearer. Take your time. Hmm. That should do it. I vividly remember everything that occurred on Pentacone. Ask away. Okay. Uh Regarding the moment of daybreak. The moment of daybreak. I've heard that's where the Dawn Factory, which processes the foundation of the dreamscape, is located. Behind the dreamscape's song and dance stand many imagination factories. Workers create all kinds of whimsical works day in and day out in their dreams. Then they return to reality and sleep on a narrow bed in a room. It's a far cry from luxury. Yeah. They say it will suffice. Experiencing the bizarre and motley dreamscape is the best reward. There I encountered a young woman who had just come of age. The perfect time to indulge in beautiful dreams. Her greatest wish was to one day move to the golden hour and see the magnificent garments she had woven with her own hands. For certain reasons, her wish was difficult to fulfill. But I managed to bring her a garment. Hmm. We're guarding the Gilded Hour. Gilded Hour. It's said to be Penacone's currency center. Yes. It is a fortress like financial city, the economic heart of the Dreams. <sighs> the Papeshi people of the Alfalfa family are there to keep it running, funding blood that is made from money everywhere on Penacone. Everyone there is exquisitely dressed and always in a hurry. The greatest wish of the local Papeshi people is for their future generations to work in the Gilded Hour. I've never met anyone who was willing to talk. I could only stand at the crossroads, watching crowds of people hurrying like the wind through the jungle of steel, only to deposit the alfalfa credits that they'd earned into the bank's vault. I don't know if they would open the vault door, but before I left, 
I witnessed a well-dressed Kopeshi person plummet from the sky. All those around him continued on their way, unfailed. About the blue hour. I hear the blue hour is very romantic. Do you have any tales to share? Perhaps Mr. Yang has heard. There is a large boat called the Aventide anchored along the Sea of Dreams. Soft music and dancing exists endlessly every night. I ran into a wizened lady there. She was at the dock, waiting for her long departed lover to return. Waiting for countless hours within time that stood still. In the humid sea breeze. Oh, that's already six in the morning. Like many who desired wealth and love, they came to Panacone to pursue their dreams. Alas, her lover's consciousness was lost in the dark depths of the Sea of Dreams. Finally, she suggested we continue our conversation on a boat in the shallows. I agreed and boarded the boat with her. But she never said anything. Her eyes absent-mindedly gazing at the horizon for what seemed like forever. Finally, we retreated to the beach. The dreamscape of chic, luxury, and consumerism, the moment of dusk. My companions have been there too. And you all must have seen those who are attempting to realize their dreams. Or have realized them. Scattering money is filled with dust and betting it on all or nothing. Everything has a price. And everything can be bought or sold. Even dreams themselves. I saw an Intellitron there, who was preparing to auction himself. When someone wins a bid, under stipulated periods and rules, he would do the buyer's every bidding, becoming that person's very possession. That Intellitron had been auctioned off a dozen times, and I participated in his 13th. That was the grandest banquet I had ever attended. But never again did anyone cast another glance at him. This time around, there were no successful bids for him. Well, that's this everything. I've seen and heard along the way. Someone once said to me, Kanakoni wasn't like this a long time ago, nor should it be. I've traveled through the reality and dreamscape of the planet of the Stipides, watched the tides of night rise and fall, when time stopped for people. Where the spirits of the rich and impoverished remain forever fixed on their own scales. This is why I think the collapse of the beautiful dream is inevitable. There might be a way to change everything. Perhaps. But if this is indeed the world that people desire, if this is precisely why life chooses to slumber, should we still seek to change it? <sighs> Miss Acheron, now it... There was a man from my homeland who, at a time when the world was grappling with deep, unhealable pain, made a choice. So you're just straight up about to talk about Auto Apocalypse and or Void Archives. He together the dreams of everyone in the world linking people's dreamscapes oh. and shouldered this burden himself. From this, he created a giant, a spiritual atom. And since that moment, the giant stood between heaven and earth, becoming the pillar of the world's existence. As a price, those who found it hard to move forward, who could not advance, forever lost their future they slumbered in a dream devoid of disaster and pain living out their days peacefully in the man's created utopia and it is because of the wishes of those people who wished not to awaken that this spiritual atom became unbreakable and yet you stand here right now which also means that man failed because people must always move towards the future. Even if human weaknesses make them pause when they 
truly cannot move forward, humanity will eventually seek a way to save itself. And that man, he was never a failure. Like everyone in that world, he etched the possibilities of human nature into his heart. I'm not actually sure what this comes from, but I know this is Honkai Impact Third lore, but I don't know a lot of that. He was the sun chaser of legend, soaring towards the sky and embracing his final victory with his fall. He ascended to heights uncharted, only to come face to face with the sun, a place not visited by anyone before. His wings would melt because of it, only for him to fall into the sea. And after that, countless others would surpass him, soaring to even greater heights. A fitting metaphor for the nameless's trailblazing spirit. Thank you, Mr. Yang. I know what you wish to confirm. The universe has innumerable similar yet different worlds. In these worlds, there are innumerable people who look alike yet don't. I too have embarked on journeys, encountering old friends with familiar faces on different worlds. Witnessing their destinies follow paths similar to mine. Though I will tell you, even if not completely similar, the story you just told, it overlaps with my past. And within that abyssal dream, I ended that man's life alone. I am not who you think I am, nor will my home be as fortunate as your world. I am sorry. It's fine. I don't mind, so long as I can alleviate your suspicion. There's oh. something I still wish to know, Miss Acheron. Under that representation of the hunt, exactly what sort of power is it that has motivated your solitary journey this far? <laughs> Mr. Yang, before answering that question, I wish to continue the previous topic. I like your analogy very much. Indeed, birds are born to fly. But in a distant past, their ancestors could only gaze at the sky in envy. They saw that faraway ray of light from above the heavens, piercing through the clouds and lengthening the earth. And so, time and time again, generation after generation, the birds spread their wings and took to the sky, attempting to touch the ceiling, all because the sun was there. Then, what if the last bird finally soars into the sky, only to realize that the end of the light is not the sun, but darkness? Then why, exactly? Do we even walk towards the light? All the way back to you. Long time no see. Having fun on Penacony? Acheron. This voice. It's not Constance. Could it be her companion? No, it's Everflame Mage. No, I don't know exactly what you are or what you're up to. My bullets will find you. Until then, you best find a casket store on Panacone and ask the owner to reserve a good quality casket for you, imposter. Imposter? I see. She gave my whereabouts to someone who's tracking Acheron, too. Who are you? Huh? Uh, did I make a mistake? <laughs> uh, who the heck are you? I'm the Garden of Recollections memo keeper. <laughs> Not bad. This is the kind of tough challenge I like. You got Imposter's bodyguard? <laughs> Never mind. It's fine. I'll leave around for you. So get that forehead clean and wait for me. I don't know what you're talking about, but you know Acheron, the Galaxy Ranger. 
Yes. I have something to ask you. <laughs> Are you asking me to write your will? Sure. Go. Not quite. I only want to ask, how exactly did she become a Galaxy Ranger? She's clearly not a path strider of the hunt, but you are, aren't you? Tell me, what's Acheron's deal? <laughs> sure. Heck, never thought I'd come across an ally. What a stroke of luck. beyond Penacone soon. Uh, memo Keeper, go buy a bottle of his Donna's White Oak and warm it up. And I'll raise a glass to you. That lady's past. <laughs> well, nobody knows. But if all you want is a simple answer, <laughs> sure, you best get a chair and take a seat. That woman uh, named Acheron is an emanator who should not exist. Yep, and switching to adventuring. Adventuring. I keep on saying adventure, not adventuring. Yep. You look pale. Or is that also part of your act? <sighs> I didn't think you'd have the nerve to show yourself. I mean, I don't know if he'd actually... Eh. I thought this was exactly what you wanted. After all, I faithfully fulfilled my duties as you instructed just tell me if you can't hold on any longer so the genius of the council of mundanites wants to be my undertaker now <laughs> my what an honor yes and i'm pretty sure the people at the strategic investment department would love to be notified of your death in due time but let's not forget, you won't be seeing them, because I'm the manager of this task. Great. Then tell your people that Aventurine is ready to go in 17 system hours. Oh, you've got a lot of nerve. How exactly do you plan on completing your task while your hands are tied by the harmony? Well, my conversation with Sunday convinced me that there's a traitor in the family, and that they hold the secrets of Penacone. So, I took the opportunity to set everything in motion. I even managed to recover the gift money. <laughs> Things haven't gone this smoothly since I walked through the doors of the reverie. Now I'm only one step away from victory. Let's just wait and see. Sounds like a very elaborate way of saying that you failed. <laughs> That's all I can say. Have you forgotten, Doctor? You betrayed me. Yeah. Do what you must. I look forward to the sight of the IPC fleet surrounding Penacom. You've achieved what you desired, haven't you? That's true, but what's your plan? Did you conceal an orbital support beacon in that gift money bag? Well, who knows? Maybe that's why I'm handing out cash, even when I'm about to bite the dust. You are indeed a gambler. An insane one, at that. Maybe I am. Who knows? <sighs> Fine. Here, take this. Open it when you're on your last legs. You'll thank me. What's this? Medical advice? You catch on pretty fast, Doctor. <laughs> I'm asking you to solve the case without giving a single clue. How typical of you, you wing-headed scoundrel. But the way you're all on edge about that stowaway, <laughs> it's just as I guessed it would be. As for now, let the rain of wealth from the IPC fall evenly on everyone. Yeah. To Icarus. Oh, yeah, you're. Yeah, you're dying. Very much so. 
Oh, I do not like that effect. Oh. Uh, the world has truly lost its way. Got these gems for you. you wait. I get it. You youngsters are always looking. Oh, a great show will start soon, old man. But before that, I need to ask you something. Ah, I see. Another fearless youngster looking for death. Oh. Let me give you a piece of advice. Don't think you're the first one who's ever thought of that idea. Death? Not even remotely innovative. I bought it from Dr. Edward. He claimed it was some exclusive fancy schmancy stuff. Oh, what a disappointment. The effects were awful. First, some monster covered in eyes stabs you in the gut. And then all you see are blurry glimpses of buildings and lights. The sky was spinning so fast it almost made me puke. Is that all? Yeah, what else can you expect? Don't put too much stock in the Pentacone movie industry. They even called this junk groundbreaking art. Can you believe it? <laughs> what a joke. Well, I'll leave you be then. I hope you have a wonderful day. A monster covered in eyes. That sounds like the memory zone meme. But buildings and lights. I can feel something inside my head. Is the harmony starting to kick in? Would you be willing to support my performance? Wow, how fabulous! Well, you said. Incredibly kind of you. <laughs> sure thing. Death? That's a pretty scary topic, and it doesn't really match the mood of this sweet dream. Well, I mean, again, this guy basically... Ah, yes, I'm holding a gun to your head, and... Oh, you see, I'm a tabloid reporter collecting ghost stories in Panicone. Yeah. <laughs> As you know, the more chilling the stories, the more attention they get. <laughs> Maybe you could help me out. Well, if you're up for some gossip, it's not about death, but there have been some rumors about a guest at the reality hotel who fell into a deep sleep and didn't wake up. Mm. It was like they were in some sort of coma. Nobody knows what caused it, but luckily the customer eventually regained consciousness. Well, all customers are under the protection of the family, after all. Yeah. Thank you. This will make for a very juicy, unexplained coma. <laughs> That's actually what happens to your body if your brain dies in a dream. But I... <sighs> the disturbing voice in my head. <sighs> it's getting closer. Oh, she... Uh, sip of liquor. A blissful reprieve. To drown a thousand sorrows. Let worries leave. <laughs> I know I have what it takes to become a poet. Oh? <laughs> you. You're giving these gems to me? Didn't expect to meet such a generous soul in this place. Uh. Are you just pitying me? Well, it really doesn't matter. As long as I have Soul Glad, that's enough. This is just a dream, after all. Oh, I'm gonna have a fucking headache after a while. I don't like the way. You really shouldn't drink so much Soul Glad, my friend. It's not good for your health. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I really should quit. But not before meeting the devil of soul glad. <laughs> the devil of soul glad? Care to elaborate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a seahorse with a long neck. <laughs> they say it loves to appear to junk people, especially the ones who are passed out on the side of the road. <laughs> How funny. Oh. Mm, yeah. 
Very funny indeed. <laughs> oh, does everyone have to go through so much torment before joining the family? Oh, darn it! <laughs> now I just want to dig out my brain and use it as evidence. Oh, Wesley. Take care, my friend. If you ever find yourself in danger, remember that the hounds are always ready to help. <sighs> eh. You don't look good, my friend. That won't be necessary. I have some business to attend to. All right, then. Okay. If you ever need help, don't hesitate to reach out to us hounds. Well, actually, I do need a favor. Stowaways? How could there be stowaways in Penacony? We've never had anything like that before. <laughs> All yeah. right. Good luck with your work then. Yeah. What was I even thinking? Family would never share intel with the IPC. Yeah. <sighs> uh -huh. You want to talk to me? Sure, but. Huh. Wealthy people have fancy ways to enjoy this dream. But to be honest, I've never seen anyone who gives out money to others like you. Mm. So, are you trying to be the prince from the tale, handing out his gold leaf garment and melting his lead heart in the fire? <laughs> I'm flattered. I'm no prince, and I just thought these gems would help you speak. So. <sighs> Another curious soul. Yeah. I see. Well, that was actually the topic I was most into when I entered the industry. But my boss shut it down. Now did your yeah. boss talk you out of it? Well, she simply said, covering baseless urban legends like that would make us look like some third-rate tabloid. I thought about it, and she had a point. Reporting on stuff like blowing out birthday candles and getting spooked by nightmare ghosts isn't exactly professional material. Mm, guess she's got a point. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. This is giving me a headache. Please let this end soon. Were you wanting to talk to me? Sorry, I thought you were checking out something behind me. I mean, I kind of was, but yeah. This? Yes, it's for you. Just take it. Is this for real? Someone is actually... No, it's not much. <sighs> I knew it. Um, me though. Oh, you sound just like my father. Always warning me about danger. Even dreams. He's an Intellitron, so... His dream entry methods are different from us organics. Can't count on him to protect me uh. if something does go haywire. Funny, right now I'm still under his protection. How ironic. Hey, stay positive. Gold will always shine one day, right? Hmm. Hmm. The devil of soul glad. Dangers in the dream. And nightmare ghosts. Well, surely death is a popular. Let me take a guess. Remember what I said? You Sigonians are better off hiding in the sewers. I sparkle. Look at you, snooping around and sticking your nose everywhere. Is the smell of death? So enticing, my fine fellow. <laughs> oh, it's you, masked fool. I should have guessed it. You're the imposter who appeared on TV after Robin's death, right? Yep. I heard you got caught by the family. I gave you a clear clue. Befriend a mute. Simple and straightforward, you know? Yep. And what did you do? You messed it up and ended up as their prisoner. I told you to make friends with a mute, not become one yourself. You really let me down. Eh. What do you mean? You know better than I do. 
Who watched the little songbird that couldn't sing perish right before their eyes? You did, Blondie. Uh, no, I, I mean... What did you mean by becoming one myself? The process you are currently going through. Well, it means you'll soon end up like her, unable to speak ever again. <laughs> but it's a good thing if you ask me, because... Because I'm getting closer to the truth. Mm. Oh? Why else do you think I'm handing out cheap trinkets all over the streets, fool? All part of the act. Fool's bait. The more pathetic I seem, the more likely you'll come sniffing around. So. Mm. Why should I help you? Don't you want to see Panacone descend into... <laughs> chaos? <laughs> well... <laughs> Happen. I just need an answer to one question. Back then, when you asked me to find a meet, did you really mean Robin? Hmm. And what if I say no? Then I'll thank you. <laughs> oh, the word no has never sounded so pleasing. Mm. <laughs> well done. I admit I underestimated you, but what difference would it make? Let me tell you something. There were two mutes, but one is dead now. And the other, though he's still in Penacony, I'm afraid you'll never find him again. Uh. Now I'm completely sure that I was on the right track from the beginning and never strayed. Eh, well, I mean, again, that there are multiple people, or at least one person died, but the other right is okay. Now, there are only two things missing from my grasp. The meaning behind the truth, and the means to expose it. Yeah. <laughs> How impressive. That's quite a fancy way of saying I haven't learned anything so far. Not exactly. I've gathered enough clues to prove its existence. And that's enough for me. As for the answers to my questions, I'll find them within 17, no, 16 system hours. Oh, really? Only 16 system hours? Mm. Well, let me lend you a hand. Here you go. This is my precious, mutually assured distraction button. And I have one just like it. When either of us presses it, the other and the whole of Penacone will go up in smoke. Yeah. If you're really so desperate for the IPC to take over Penacone, blowing up the chessboard isn't a bad idea. Start from scratch. That's where the IPC excels, right? Hmm. Just press the button when you're at your wit's end. And of course, Feel free to reach out to me for my hospice care, too. Okay, I mean... Not a whole lot, I mean... Oh, a deadly button, huh? <laughs> well, I guess the family didn't take your threat seriously at all. Otherwise, how on earth did you manage to bring it in here? <laughs> I have my own ways. That's all you need to know. Eh. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I'll have to decline your offer. Who knows if your little gadget will actually work. By the way, I have no plans to search for the other mute friend you speak of. But it's good to hear that he's still here in Pentagon. I'll handle the rest myself. I'll orchestrate a grand finale for the downfall of the family. <laughs> and at the climax, yep. the walls will crumble, people will wake up, and those who couldn't speak will find their voices again. When that time comes, Go ahead, press the button, light up the sky with a magnificent fireworks display for me. Catch you later, fool. <laughs> You're still talking big, but sure, if that happens, I'll stay true to my word. Yep. Just don't let me down now, okay?
Oh, we're getting right into this now. So, number 35. You're back. Like your new lucky charm. Can a commodity code really be considered a lucky charm? Silence! I didn't give you permission to speak, you Sigonian hound. <sighs> the guys in black didn't say much, so I've no idea what you did to save your skin in that massacre back in the day. But I figured you must have had good luck, so I bought you. From now on, you and your good luck are my assets. Are we clear? Okay. Your first task is simple. In addition to you, I've purchased 30, uh, well, 34 other slaves. And... Go and play a game with them. You came out alive after two days. It proves that you are the real deal. You're insane. <laughs> Testing out if you're a good product. Aren't you worried that the money you spent on me will go to waste? I've got stacks on stacks, Blondie. The slave market is never short of self-righteous brats like you. But you look good. And that's why many customers are betting their fortunes on a scrawny brat like you. So go along now and uh, don't let your master down. Uh, how much did you spend? What? My price. How much did you pay for me? Huh. You really want to know? Hmm. Well, it was 60 tonba. No more, no less. Okay. I'll take my chances. 30 tonba. If I come back alive, you'll give me 30 tonba. Deal? <laughs> Are you trying to strike a bet with me? Yes. <laughs> You've got some guts. Yeah, sorry, but uh, that won't do. Don't forget your place, slave. You're not qualified to be at the table. You're just a chip. A life thrown away in someone else's hands. Either you come back with more chips for your master, or you never come back. It's all or nothing. Don't embarrass me, my luck. Okay. Huh. What brings you here, Gallagher? I love character design. Some friends from the old days. Do you have a moment to spare, Siobhan? Oh, I have the whole day to spare. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dream Jolt Hostelry. This bar offers a wide variety of drinks, but we draw the line at soul blast. Why settle for ordinary when you can experience extraordinary? We're dedicated to serving up nothing but pure joy and laughter. Okay. What would you like to drink? I'll whip it up. Oh, look. A lady. Who's Serval? Oops. <laughs> Just spare them, my esteemed bartender. I'll take over the bar today. I'm getting up there in age, and I need some practice before I forget the skills that used to put food on my table. They're all under the counter. Since our guests have traveled from afar, Shouldn't you whip up some special drinks? That's exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> hey, the discussion might take quite some time. So I'll prepare some customized non alcohol In the bar? Why, we're in a dream, my lovely lady. You can help yourself to anything if you wish for it. Comfort, hunger, confusion, or even boredom. It's all within reach, right at your... Oh, did you hear that? Even in reality, mixing drinks is more than just throwing ingredients together. A bartender needs to capture the bar's atmosphere, master technique, and spin a tale of mystery and anticipation. Only then can a perfect drink crafted with a customer's life story be created. In other words, what you get from your drink is down to luck. So don't overthink it. Indecisiveness has no place when it comes to enjoyment. Uh. A few days ago, an actor from the Iris family came, caused a ruckus with Siobhan. Uh. Mm. Nah, 
It turned out to be a landslide victory. Oh. Uh, that being said, opening a bar in this place filled with monsters? You'll have to ask her yourself to find out. Mm. What is I'm this? So glad. But I thought they didn't sell so glad at the bar. <laughs> Let's give it a shake. Maybe someone else brought it here. Well, that's possible. You see so glad everywhere these days. So it wouldn't be a surprise if someone brought a bottle here. Why don't they sell so It's all about the bartender's pride. It wouldn't make sense for customers to come here and order drinks they can find anywhere else. That's the mindset I use when I brew my coffee. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, that's quite a stash. Not sure if it's enough. Stay out of my way. I'm looking for Siobhan. <sighs> Haven't I made myself clear enough, Miss Amity? The Dream Jolt Hostelry only welcomes guests who want to enjoy a drink to their heart's content. Sorry, but I'm not interested in your proposal. And yeah, now where are we getting into? But you have the talent. You'll attract a huge audience. Oh, um, okay. You're destined for the Iris' stage, not for this run-down shack. Come with me. We'll become the talk of Penacony, a shiny light into every corner of the dreamscape. Please, Siobhan, I really need you. Hang out. As you see, I'm entertaining my guests. Don't make me repeat myself. Fine. If you don't come along, I'll just sit here and not go anywhere else. Just one moment. What's her deal? Hey, can you do that clock? Time is running out. Yeah, I'm counting. Okay, time to mush chest. Anyway, time to emotionally manipulate what someone. Get, I just don't yep. I've seen it. The moment. When Siobhan and I share the stage, the crowd is going wild, applause crashing like waves, the aroma of irises fills the air, a beautiful melody playing, ribbons dancing around us, and the taste is sweeter than honey. Mm. I've seen that scene countless times in my dreams, and every time it mesmerizes me. That's yeah. why I have to bring her back to that world. <laughs> Want to raise a glass, my attentive listener? Let's consider it a time. <laughs> She's still not leaving. Maybe I'll have to try again. I just don't get... It's ridiculous, right? I'm too timid and shy, longing to shine, but afraid of stepping into the spotlight. I need you don't know Siobhan's past, and you have no clue how radiant she used to be. Even among the talented Iris family, her skill was unmatched. Okay. No, she probably thinks I'm just trying to ride her fame to get ahead. But all I want is for her to reclaim her place. There she is, Rock Wild. Again. Okay. Those darn Iris jerks. 
they're the ones who forced Siobhan into hiding here, running this pesky bar. It's all their dirty scheming. Huh. I get it now. I, I can help make a way for her. I can do her a favor. Uh. I'll go back and write a letter to the Dream Master exposing the crimes committed by the Iris family. Siobhan will definitely appreciate it. Can't wait for you to get concrete shoes, Sheik, because of that. Well, talking to you has got me feeling a bit down. My thoughts are swirling, making me more clear, and bringing tears to my eyes. Maybe yep. I should find a place to reflect on what Siobhan truly means to me. Here's the payment for the drinks. Mm. Please, pass it on to her. Amity is love? That's good for her. Radiant dreams may be enticing, but they're nothing more than dreams. Yep. Her drink is on the house. Please, keep the money. When you're ready, go to Gallagher. I can tell he's itching to show off his skills. Yep. I was literally standing like that being said, mixing a drink is way simpler than you'd imagine. Just pick your favorite ingredients, toss them in a glass, mix it up, and it's done. So go ahead, explore the bar. Nice work. Let me you found some interesting ingredients there. Each drink has its own unique flavor. And the base ingredient sets the tone for the initial taste and the lingering aftertaste. So, which one would you like to use as... Sweeter than Susa juice and more bitter than dream syrup. Dream in a bottle. That's a metaphor for Pentaconia. Now that you've chosen the base, the taste is not very intense, yet evocative. After those despicables sent Mikhail away, I found myself lost in the wilderness of my dreams. They say that even the dirt here oozes with sweetness. <laughs> All I tasted was stoic bitterness. <coughs> After the despicable sent Mikhail away. Mikhail. Almost there. Let's pick a decoration. Which style? The IPC's favorite. Hmm. Ambitious, aren't you? Well, it's done. Hmm. Here's to you, Watcher, with this glass of the long goodbye to a bitter childhood. <laughs> Well done, Gallagher. You're not over the hill yet. <laughs> so are you satisfied? Oh, the flavors! The richness and layers of these flavors are a masterpiece. I'm not entirely sure what it all means. <laughs> well, if you're expecting a profound answer, I'm afraid I'll disappoint you. The imagery it implies is pretty straightforward. It's just a glimpse of what this dream truly tastes like. Nothing more. Mm. Does this true taste have anything to do with that, Mikhail? Yeah, that name does sound familiar. <sighs> I was right about you. You guys seem to know quite. You have a leaf on your. You have like a leaf cufflink on your sleeve. Let's mm. dig deeper into the case, and of course, I'll tell you a story about Mikhail. All right, let's start with what we know based on the clues the family has. It seems that Firefly isn't a local or an invited guest. In other words, a stowaway. Yep. <laughs> she managed to fool me at first. My age must be getting the best of me. But here on the planet of festivities, stowaways are a common sight. You're bound to run into one sooner or later. After the incident, the hounds wasted no time searching for that girl in both the dreamscape and reality. But here's the thing. We only received bad news. And the trickiest kind at that. She simply vanished. Leaving no trace in the dreamscape or reality. A 
as if she had never come to Penacony at all. Yeah. Huh? Does that mean? That's impossible. The problem now is not that she's dead, but that it's as if she had never existed in the first place. Yeah. Let me be frank. This case, actually, is unlike anything the Bloodhound family has dealt with before. Dealt with before? So, death does happen in Penacony, if I understand correctly. Yes. You've witnessed it, so there's no need to hide. Even the shiniest city has its dark side. We're all adults here. Surely I don't need to explain too much to you. Confronting the family based on that alone would be naive. Death may occur in sweet dreams. So what? Such events are highly unlikely and only affect a tiny number of people. Yeah. If you really want to delve deeper into this case, you need to understand the true problem with the family. I guess it's time to tell the story of that Mikhail. You're very perceptive. The Astral Express has received that music box too, right? Do you know the secrets at home? There's a message. Witness the impossible in the realm of dreams. Find the legacy of the Watchmaker, father of Penacony. And thus the answer to the question, why does life slumber? <laughs> That's the exact wording. Yeah. Hey, why are you laughing? Did you write it? It's no, but I'm the officer in charge of this case. So how could I not? Uh -huh. I'm sure you must have noticed that this message didn't come from the family. Yep. You might have even guessed that the relationship between the family and the watchmaker isn't as close as it seems. <laughs> That's just our speculation. Actually, it's hard to believe that the father of Penacony and its actual managers are at odds. That doesn't surprise me. Now I can assure you that your speculation is absolutely correct. The family has considered the Watchmaker an enemy for a long time. But the Hounds haven't been able to track him down, as he seems to be living only in the characters and stories he created. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered why the family allowed the Watchmaker to send out such a ridiculous message to the outside world? Invi so, you want to seize this opportunity to expose the Watchmaker? Well, now you understand why the Oak family authorized the Nameless to assist in the investigation, but kept you in the dark, right? Because the Watchmaker is not the legend of the land of the dreams at all. Mm. He's the most shameful stain in the history of Penacony. And he's the root cause of all the anomalies in the dreamscape. Yeah. What does this have to do with Mikhail? You don't get it? Well, I mean, Mikhail, the betrayer of the family, he's the watchmaker. Well... Here we are, Clock Studios Theme Park, the most popular entertainment center in Pentecost. Yeah, bad. we are at the new area. Wait, aren't we supposed to be discussing the Watchmaker? I would have expected you to- The culture of the city reflects its history in the most authentic way. To you, it's a fun place. But to me, it's a prison. For the planet's past. Yep. You know that Penacony used to be the IPC's prison planet, right? All the prisoners were brought here, helping the Garden of Recollection salvage the leaking memoria from the macro void. The prolonged exposure to high concentrations of memoria caused a unique phenomenon. The dreams of countless prisoners intersected and overlapped, and people started meeting each other in their dreams living lives that were almost identical to reality but everything has a price and sweet dreams are no exception in the end the dream world was unable to alleviate the suffering of prisoners in reality he is hanu the great leader of dreamville the great history is always written by the winners however it's undeniable that Clocky is an animation that draws from Penacony's actual history. Okay. I mean, glad, to, uh, glad that you're at least acknowledging that first part, His but still. not only exist in Dreamville, but also in the distant past. 
Once you realize this, you'll understand why we're here. There are so many members of the Bloodhound family around here. They just received a lockdown order, supposedly from Sunday himself. Who knows what it's for? Uh. <laughs> so many of them. I've never seen anything like this, even when they're tracking down suspects. Can you convince them to let us in? We need to go in. We don't want to draw any unwanted attention inside. We can just talk here. Let's find a quiet spot and continue our conversation. The view here is great, right? We can see everything from including Clocky. Um. If all the characters in the animation are based on characters in reality, then Clocky's counterpart is definitely the watchmaker. Yep. In the animation, he's Hanyu's partner and one of the founders of Dreamville. Does that mean the watchmaker was personally involved in that war and sided with Asdana? Yeah. There's a monument to war for free. Hanunu fought alongside a motley crew of masked fools, nameless, history fictionologists, mourning actors, omen vanguards, even visitors from beyond the sky. In the end, they emerged victorious. Okay, what the hell does history fic fictionologists mean? Is that just like history of how fiction is made or? M was the person who would eventually be known as the watchmaker. But if you do the math, doesn't that mean the watchmaker was around for several centuries? I'm yeah. not sure, but Mikhail was already the watchmaker when I met him. So maybe he inherited the title. How old are you now, Mr. Officer? You're either going to say a comically large number or a comically small number with no in between. Like, you're not going to be a 30 subs. You're either going to be three centuries or, like, what, 10? I'm 13. Off by three, fine. Uh, no way. Not even close. Anunu freed the frontier prison, but peace uh. still eluded him. With limited resources, threats from the outside world, and internal conflicts between major prison districts, the future of Osdana was uncertain. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until the Watchmaker approached the family with the idea of turning the prison into the planet of festivity that Penacone finally gained its name and glory. Thus, he became known as the father of Penacone. But didn't you say the Watchmaker betrayed the family? And you said you were his com No. I'm not his companion. But rather one of his many children. But I am indeed a traitor. Not to the family. But to... Mikhail. What did you do? <sighs> I did nothing. And that's the worst betrayal of all. Eh. Just like you, I had close companions. We dedicated ourselves to Penacone. But the Oak family, they set us up. Mikhail was too old to protect his children anymore. So we left the family to find our own path. We were branded traitors of the Harmony. Even though the true traitors were someone else. Mm -hmm. We continue to praise the Watchmaker's name in the world. Behind closed doors, they condemn him on a pillar of shame. Nevertheless, oh. we wanted to clear his name. We intended to, but we failed. Too much time had passed. In the land of the dream, the family accepted me and made me an officer, supposedly as a form of forgiveness. But it was actually a punishment. Since then, I've been completely cut off from my partners and my past. As for Mikhail, I heard he died in obscurity, in a place where no one could find him. That's when I realized that the Penacone I once knew would never return. We're truly sorry for what happened. But this is not the end of the story, right? Yeah. Apparently, someone has inherited the title of the Watchmaker and has been secretly working against the family all this time. Is the Watchmaker an organization? Well, that's one way to look at it. However, only one member has truly inherited the Watchmaker's title. Unfortunately, after all these years, I have no idea who that person is, 
or if they're even real. Or just Mikhail's lost soul haunting the dreams. Is it going to be goddamn Misha? So, do you understand why I'm spilling all this info? Because I believe the girl's death must be connected to the watchmaker's legacy. And at the end of all these mysteries, we will find the answers we are seeking. If it really is Mikhail's ghost, I want to meet him. If only for the last time. For those who despise me could form a line from here all the way to the entrance of the hotel. But those willing to look me in the eye and hear me out? Let's just say, there won't be many. I've told you all I know is a sign of gratitude. Thank you for listening. Hmm? Uh, something just happened at the theme park. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, good luck to all of you. Oh, is that adve adventuring? What's so different between the stowaways projected by Penicoli today and the dream seekers once hailed as pioneers several amber eras ago? Mm. Gallagher does have a troubled past, it seems. No shit. While Firefly's whereabouts remain a mystery, his story. Uh, the family is all united. Gallagher suggests that the real traitor is someone Ooh. else, probably within the Oak family. And that death is related to the Watchmaker. Ends up with what we've gathered so far. Firefly got involved in this mess because of the legacy, and now we're sure that Aventurine's accusations against Atheron are... Yep. And that Clocky's based on the Watchmaker. Uh, you're really into Clocky, huh? He's just a fictional character. Speaking of which, that Clocky who only reveals himself to you is quite intriguing. It's a shame we've never met him since then. You're in sums it up. confirmed a lot of our suspicions. Let's take a moment to think about the clues we have. Send a message to Welt and see how things are going on his end. <sighs> Hi. You stay up all night. Pretty much, yeah. Not a smart thing to do, dear. Okay. You need sleep. I know. Okay. Oh, macarons. Are your companions worried about you? They're just checking up on me. Let's get in and get out. Seems they've made some progress. Looks like we're about to enter the depths of Dewlight Pavilion. Hmm. It's been a smooth ride. Almost too smooth for a heavily guarded mansion. Let's see if there's any... Oh, it's here. Something feels off. A grand mansion like this, and no, this no. door is open. Looks like we'll have to investigate. Just one moment. <sighs> Light. I've made myself less noticeable. The crew can explain their presence as authorized by the family, but. I can't come up with any excuses for being here. I see. What an interesting technique. Dream four. A gleam of old The model in the sand pit. It's the golden hour. Maybe the heads of the family used that model. The footprints here are different from the rest. There are two sets of them. Looks like outsiders might have passed through here not long ago. Well, there aren't any people in this mansion. They've set up quite a few mimetic guards to patrol this place. 
Oh, why? I was gonna use the. This is where it ends. Gonna use the thing. Business, eh? Oh wait, I'm done. So, bolt. One, two, three. Two shall fall. Try this on for size. I mean, hey, at least I have Ching Choi. Uh, okay. 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 Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine. Oh, it replaced the healer in my team. entire workforce were assigned other tasks before Robin's death. It must have been a big project to require that much manpower. The Charmony Festival, perhaps. But no matter what their main priorities are, there should always be someone left at the mansion, right? So you're saying someone deliberately cleared the place out? Yeah, yeah but I don't know why. And we're at the dinner table. No one here, right? Since no one's around to entertain us, let's make ourselves at home. Stay close to me so that my wife can cover you too. Okay. Chest. Anything else in here? Not really, besides just books. Our Arncho Mel Halovian was dragged into the sea by an unknown mean while sunbathing on the beach in the moment of Oasis. Subsequent search and rescue operations proved unsuccessful. Oh, this was the first case. Can't tell if anything is wrong. Insufficient. Mail from Sancho enters spheroid in golden hour and mysteriously disappeared while the spheroid was bouncing in the air. Later examiners show no signs of forced entry and exit of the spheroid. Seems the culprit can ignore physical barriers. Conventional investigation methods feasible? 
Imaka, a female human, would participate in a talent show in the moment of scorched sand, but accidentally fell off the stage before the judges turned around and disappeared into the shadows below. The footage for the episode of the show has been deleted. The cult produced swift and skills that disguise as caution is advised. Weber, a male Bapeshi, fell down on entering his office on a payday, and the guilt of dower and skilled by an unknown meme suddenly appeared. The memories of witnesses have been processed. Covering to attack wounded or vulnerable individuals, uncertain. Maybe taking orders from someone else. I've been streaming. I've already been streaming for long enough. Okay. Good God, this is a victim list. Information about Robin, Firefly, and the other victims. I don't see any commonalities in the footage. Looks like the rumors were right. Death does seem to be targeting random victims. And based on Sunday's notes, he's no stranger to death. He's just surprised that it has resurfaced. Mm. This light cone is securely guarded. It must hold some important memories. Sunday cheering for his sister. According to Robin's interview, despite having performed on so many grand stages, her favorite performance was a, a pretend show she put on with her brother when they were just kids. Yep. I wonder how their relationship is now. Growing up brings gains, but also losses. Yeah, time is a way of smoothing things out. The beautiful dreams of youth will eventually fade away. And then the last one. Dear brother, how are you doing these days? I had intended to visit you at Dwight Pavilion as soon as possible upon my return. But approaching with the approaching Charmony Festival and your busy schedule, I refrain from troubling you. However, an urgent matter complies me to share you something immediately. Since my turn to panic, I have experienced people change in my voice. At first, I thought it was caused by exhaustion or illness, but after consulting with doctors, they assured me of my perfect health and just my concerns. However, my voice worsened over time, and I experienced periods of complete voice loss. In order to find answers, I conducted many private investigations in my out-time out of rehearsals, of course. Eventually, I realized that the harmony in Pentagogy is not pure. A discord lurking within has tainted my voice of harmony, which I believe to be the root cause of my vocal issues. I immediately realized that such level of interference can only occur either with powerful external forces pulling the strings, or a senior member of the family is involved. A fourth journey of further investigation has led me to the la to latter conclusion. Alarming discovery traitor has emerged within the family in Pentagoni, and it, it is highly likely that the person is one of the four family heads. I trust you with I trust you implicitly to your brother because our promise with Charmony Festival on the horizon, I fear this person intends to beat our progress or even use the festival for some ulterior motive. Okay, so Yeah, the chances are that the brother being the big culprit is becoming more and more likely. Uh, at any rate, I suggest you find you monitor other family heads while also prioritizing your own safety. You're the only true family member I have left. There's another matter that requires our attention. During my investigation, I learned about the memory zone meme, Death, and further inquiries led me to believe that the culprit who directed it to cause series of incidents is likely affirmation traitor in the family. I've collected more clues and I'm prepared to verify my hypothesis. Rest assured, you can focus on the preparations for Charmony, for the Charmony Festival. Once I thoroughly investigate death, I'll come meet you immediately. It won't take long. Given your heavy workload, please take care of yourself. Don't stay in the dreamscape all the time. Spend some time in reality when you are free. I brought some more specialties from the galaxy. Giant Moa, or Giant Moa, puddings, tarts from Morillion, Morillons, wild strawberries from Akiyako, no, Akonyako, Akonyako, known for their exceptional size and sweetness, which I'm certain you'll enjoy, and all marine cream, cream crack, cracknels from Medicia. Don't forget to enjoy them. May Jai be with us. Your sister, Robin. As soon as I and the rest of the crew arrived in Penaconi, Mr. Sunday and Robin showed up to greet us. I remember hearing something unusual in her voice, and now it seems I was right. Robin believed it was because the harmony had been tampered with somehow. But as far as I know, there aren't many entities capable of interfering with the power of paths. Meaning? If there really is a traitor within the family, that person must hold a high position or possess unimaginable strength.
Oh no, it might be Gallagher. That would explain why Mr. Sunday has been having such difficulty in catching the traitor. Okay, but either way. Alright, I'm going to end the YouTube video for now. Thank you to everyone who is currently watching the YouTube video. I hope you're having a good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Whichever suits you best. Thank you, and goodbye.